Hi, I am Kelly Tillman. I am a field crop entomologist in the Department of Entomology at Ohio State University. And I'm talking today about some of the midsummer things to watch for in corn and soybean. In soybean, in the middle of July, what we typically start keeping an eye on is defoliating insects. And these are anything that causes leaf area loss in your soybeans. There are a lot of different insects that can chew on soybean leaves. Uh, Japanese beetles are a big one. There are also bean leaf beetles and a bunch of different species of caterpillars that you might find in your soybean. Now, a nice thing about monitoring for defoliation damage is you don't have to worry a whole lot about which species are doing it. Uh, really, leaf area loss is leaf area loss, and so we make decisions on spraying based on how much leaf area you have lost. So what you want to do is go through uh, your field and stop in at least 10 locations, and at each location take a plant, take a trifoliate from the top, the middle, and the bottom of the canopy, collect all these leaves and take them back to the tailgate of your truck lay them out, and this is the point where you want to estimate overall defoliation. It's important not to make a decision about what your defoliation levels look like just based on the field edges, because those are often a lot rattier than in the field interior. So you really want to force yourself to examine well into the field, and you also want to take leaves from the top, middle, and bottom, because defoliation is often worse at the very top of the plant and not really indicative of what's going on with the plant as a whole. So you want to force yourself to try to get in on the average condition of the field, not just the worst bits that you see. Soybeans can take a lot more defoliation than you would give them credit for and rebound. They're really um, master plants at compensating. And uh, so our defoliation thresholds where we recommend management um, are higher than you might think. We have a threshold for vegetative soybeans up through R2 of 30% uh, defoliation, and that's rather a lot of defoliation, and you will not see the difference in yield. When we get into the pod filling stages, R3 through R5, the plants are more sensitive to damage and we bump that defoliation tolerance down to 10%. And then after R5 in R6, when there's still a little bit of a fill left to go, we uh, go with a 15% overall defoliation rate. Now, defoliation is notoriously tricky to gauge by eyeball. It's just something we're not really good at getting an accurate assessment on. Just the human eye is not great at it. And so we highly recommend that you use a visual guide to defoliation. So those leaves that you've got on your tail bed of your pickup, uh, take out a visual guide that shows you what 10, 15, 30% defoliation looks like and use that to help you make your assessment. And we have a nice defoliation and threshold guide that is a card that you can download from our website, aginsects.osu.edu that shows you what 10, 15, and 30% defoliation look like, both for leaf and what the uh, actual vegetation might look like. So highly recommend you use that guide. Uh, sweeping is not necessarily uh, going to get you the best read on what your overall level of defoliation is, but it can get you an idea of what the various things are in the field. And it's nice to know if there's a lot of defoliation, what is the major thing? Uh, causing that because that might influence your choice of product if you have more grasshoppers, for example, or more Japanese beetles. So this is not really a threshold situation, but this is just the uh, good technique for sweeping in soybean. Take a muslin sweep net and make a pendulum sweep that gets most of the net area through the soybean vegetation. Go along and take at least 10 of these pendulum sweeps, give things a good shake, grab the bag by the net, pull it inside out, and then you'll be able to roll it up and see what you've got. We probably won't have anything now because we just took a few sweeps. So we've got a few little spiders in there.
So that's how you sweep in soybean. Now I'm going to talk about mid-season pests that we keep an eye on in Ohio in corn. And uh, the main one that we monitor for intensively is western bean cutworm. This is a moth that lays its eggs on the plant. The eggs hatch to caterpillars, which get into the corn ear and can cause direct damage, but also open the plant to, uh, to uh, fungal uh, infections. The way you scout for western bean cutworm, which usually is peak in the middle of July, you want to examine the top three or four leaves of the plant. You really won't find them further down. Uh, the moth will lay eggs on the corn leaf, so a good way to look for them efficiently is to walk along a row with the sun behind the leaves and then you actually see the shadow of the uh, egg mass on the leaves and that can help speed up your job. You want to look for these egg masses in five different spots and in each spot on 20 plants consecutively down the row. Try to spread these spots out around the field and when you get to a spot check at least 20 plants in a row. This means you're checking a total of 100 plants. If you find western bean cutworm egg masses on 8% or 8 of your 100 plants, that's when we recommend a spray treatment. Now you want to get that treatment in when the eggs are almost ready to hatch, but before the caterpillars have had a chance to grow. Uh, the egg masses turn purple when they're getting ready to hatch, and you don't want to let the caterpillars go very long after hatch before spraying them, because they will make their little way from those egg masses on the leaves into the whorl or into the ear, at which point the insecticide can't touch them. So you really, the timing is important. You have a very narrow window to make an effective spray for this pest. Hi, my name is Taylor Dill and I'm the PhD student with Battle for the Belt. We're here at the Northwest Research Station today and we are doing disease ratings for frog eye leaf spot. And I have my friend Fabiano Colette with me. He is also a PhD student in Dr. Laura Lindsay's lab and he studies frog eye leaf spot. So he's helping us scout this study. So Fabiano, what is frog eye? So first, hello everyone. Uh, thanks Taylor for the invitation Thank to you. be here. Uh, so frog eye, a uh, leaf spot, it's an uh, important disease that uh, can attack soybeans. And uh, this disease is caused by a fungus. And the, this fungus, the pathogen is called um, Cercospora sogina. So what are the symptoms of frog eye? So uh, the symptoms are lesions that we can find them on uh, the leaves, soybean leaves. Usually the lesions appear first uh, on the younger leaves uh, and the upper canopy of the plant. And these lesions, they have a circular angular format. Um, and these lesions, uh, they have the center of the lesion it has a gray col coloration. However, the surrounding, the margin, uh, margin of the lesions has a reddish purple, purple coloration. Okay, so it looks like a little frog eye. Yes, looks like a little frog eye. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So when does it normally come into Ohio? So what I've seen in with my research last year and this year, uh, we are starting seeing those lesions, these lesions in soybeans, usually at uh, our two flowering stage, uh, our three beginning pod formation stage. So how do we manage this, this disease? How do we know when we need to spray uh, to protect our yield? So for every disease, we need to think about the disease triangle, right? We need to think about uh, the susceptible host, we need to think about the pathogen, and we need to think about the weather conditions, the environmental conditions. So for, for frog eye, for example, uh, the best ways to manage this disease is planting a resistant cultivar. Uh, so make sure one, once you buy up the seeds, you choose a variety that has a certain gra a degree of resistance for this uh, pathogen. Also, another management that could be included are uh, crop rotation. Uh, mm -hmm. Although uh, 
uh, we uh, this uh, this is overwind overwinter here in Ohio can overwinter here in Ohio. Uh, if we implement crop rotations, the, the amount of inoculum uh, that survives year by year over year is going to be reduced. Another um, management practice that a farmer can adopt is the fungicide applications. Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, my recommendation is uh, first confirm if they have a susceptible variety or resistant variety. If they have a susceptible variety, then they need to uh, scout uh, the field for the disease, um, confirm there is the presence, and the best the best moment to do the scouting is at R2, R3 uh, growth, Sabine growth stage. And from that, then uh, apply fungicide if necessary. So what should the farmer consider uh, when thinking of spraying fungicide? So yeah, for, for sure, first of all, uh, he uh, the farmer needs to know what cultivar he planted and if it's susceptible for the frog eye leaf spot disease. And also if the environmental conditions are um, favorable for the disease progression, um, frog eye leaf spot, the pathogen, uh, Cercospora, uh, prefers uh, warm, warm weather and uh, humid weather. So we have seen we have seen that uh, in Ohio in the past few days and weeks. Um, also, uh, needs to the farmer needs to take into consideration what is the soybean growth stage at that moment. If they need to apply fungicide, the best moment for fungicide application is at R2, R3 soybean growth stage. Uh, R5 growth stage is not recommended to apply uh, any fungicide because it's already uh, too late in the season. The, the soybean uh, grain seeds are already being developed, it's already almost fully developed. So a fungicide at R5 growth stage might not be uh, might not bring any uh, return to the farmer. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Fabiano, and thank you for helping me scout uh, this field. No problem. Anytime. Hi, my name is Luke Waltz. I'm a PhD student with the Food, Ag, and Biological Engineering Department, Ohio State. Uh, this week I want to share some of the data we're collecting using a smartphone as part of our nationwide uh, Ag Tech Innovation Hub project. So you may have seen in some previous videos that we're using drones for data collection. We're installing soil sensors in the ground. We've got some time-lapse trail cameras that we're mounting out in the field. But we also know that uh, uh, one of the most available sensors is a smartphone that everyone has in our pockets. So we're collecting smartphone images weekly at each of the three sites in the Battle for the Belt project. And we just want to walk through how we're collecting the imagery. First of all, we get an iPhone 13 mounted to a selfie stick. Um, and we're getting short videos of 30 seconds to, to one minute from each planting date. So uh, when the corn or soybeans are small enough, we're going down the rows with the um, with the phone getting the images of the plants from a side view. And we've got these yardsticks here, turning these, these yardsticks out uh, out next to the soybeans so that we can get a sense of the, uh, of the spatial variation. And as we go through and analyze the data, our goal is to be able to not need a, a yardstick to be able to automatically get some data like uh, stand counts and crop heights and things like that. So uh, the other thing is this iPhone has a GPS sensor in it. So we're able to, as we're collecting the video, also get a GPS location of where we're at. So one of the things that's important for this work is to get a sizable data set of images. Uh, since we're collecting video at 30 frames per second, uh, we could take these short videos and break them out into, uh, into separate images. And once we get to the growing season, we think we might have a data set uh, approaching 1 million images. I collected right here in Ohio at, at three locations uh, around the state. So we're interested in using the, uh, the images to automatically detect things like growth stage, crop height, stand count, and disease. Uh, this could lead to uh, tools that could amplify the efforts of researchers and uh, also could turn into tools that could be farmer facing that uh, they could use to assist them as they scout their fields. And so once again, we want to thank the Nationwide Ag Tech Innovation Hub for their support in funding this research.